earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Hello and welcome to our online service. It's so good to have you with us. Now, if it's your first time watching or you've been watching for a while and you want to get connected to our church, you can go to our website, to our online info desk, fill in those forms and we'll get back to you with all the information needed for you to really become a part and get connected with our church. Now, if you want to make a financial contribution, we want to say, first of all, thank you for sowing into the vision that God has for this community and for this city. And we want to bless you and just say, God is faithful, God provides, and God is good. So thank you for giving your finances. And we are trusting with you for um, supernatural breakthrough in your lives. Now we're going to jump into the message. So God bless you, and I hope you enjoy this message. Well, good morning. It is again such a privilege to be able to connect with you like this online. I want to start with a story about this young lady that inherited a house from a grandmother. It was a gift from a grandmother. And so she was so excited to move into the house. It was a nice house, but the garden was in shambles. I mean, it really looked bad, but she was excited. And so every day after work, she would get out the garden tools and get into the garden and prune and cut and dig and plant and water. And about 10 months later, she had the most beautiful garden in the whole neighborhood. So one day the local pastor walks by and he sees the garden and he, he says to her, well, dear young lady, you know, I must say that God and you have really created a magnificent, beautiful garden here. And she replied, she said, well, pastor, you know, you should have seen the garden when God had it all to himself. We are busy with a sermon series called God Colors. And actually, this is the end of the series. And uh, we're talking about gifts and talents. And uh, we looked at a book by Christian Swartz. It's called Three Colors of Ministry. Now, I had some people asking me where can they get hold of the book. And it seems to be out of print in South Africa. But I found a link online where you can borrow the book uh, similar to like in a library online, you can borrow it. So I've posted the link uh, to that in the sermon notes. The sermon notes you'll find on Facebook. So you're welcome if you want to read through that book to head over to Facebook and uh, go click on the link and follow the instructions. But we looked at this book that focuses on three areas, three categories for talents and gifts. Now, if you missed the previous two sermons, I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and go and listen to God Colors Blue, Red, and today we are talking about Green. Now, I once again just want to remind you of the, the scripture that I referenced to in the first sermon. It, it's from the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 6. It says, but there are differences of gifts but the same spirit, referring to the gifts of the spirit. And that's the blue category. The, the verb that we used here uh, is restore. Then it goes on. And there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the red category. The verb that we used here is share, to share the gospel with somebody else. And then there are differences of workings. But it is the same God working all things in all. The workings that is spoken of here is the re green category. It refers to the green category. And the verb is the word develop, to, to develop. And, and so that's the one we want to get into to, today. And uh, I want to remind you once again just that although we have identified three different categories, the Bible doesn't necessarily list them differently. Because just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, these talents and gifts and workings and ministries all work together for God's plan for our lives. For today, I want to go to the book of Ephesians 2 verse 10. That will be our scripture reading for today's sermon. For we are His workmanship. 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That we should walk in them. So God has created us. We are His workmanship. But He's also created creation and included in these good works. We were created in Christ for good works, the Bible says. Included in this is the mandate that God gave us you know, to further work and build and cultivate this creation, this earth that is given to us as a gift. Listen to this. Genesis 1.28 in the message. Prosper. Reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for. And then he carries on, he talks about responsibility for the rest of creation. In the next chapter, Genesis 2 verse 15. Then the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and to guard it. That's the mandate God gave us. And, and much like that lady, the young lady that cultivated the garden God created the trees and the plants and the grass you know she could not do that but God gave her the raw material and he said you cultivate it now you now cultivate this and what God did is he pulled us in as co-workers so that we can co-create in creation he created but the work we bring makes it beautiful makes it Something that honors God and brings glory to the name of God. And so in Doxa Deo, we focus on three prim primarily focus points. We talk about knowing God. That is important to us. It's our relationship with the Father. It's our understanding of our identity that's found in Christ. It is our walk with God. And, and we want to talk about that and teach and preach on that and make sure that people grow in their relationship with Jesus. But then we also talk about loving people. Loving people is what we are called to do, is to love people, to forgive one another, to build one another up. It's that one another concept and, and that our lives is not just about ourselves, but God has put, placed us here on earth to love people. But there's a third category. There's a, a third focus point, and that is to impact your world, the place you live, the place where you work, your family, your friends, your, your world. Like God gave Adam and Eve, uh, Eve the Garden of Eden to cultivate and to take care of. God has given you your portion of this world that he wants you to take care of. And it's this part where our cultivating and caring for, taking charge of, where our natural talents and gifts come into play. This is the green functioning of the gifts and talents area. And this is what I want to talk to you about today then. There's three things that I want to point out. The first one is this idea of discovery. Discovering our talents. Listen to this. Galatians 6 verse 4 to 5. In the message, it says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Listen, God is calling us to make a careful exploration of who He has created us to be, who He's created you to be. He's given you a life and He's given you talents and gifts. And He, he, he says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work that you've been given. In other words, your life, your talents, your gifts and the work you've been given, they correspond. There's a link between the works you've been given and your talents and your gifts. And therefore, you need to know what they are. You need to discover them. So many people, when you ask them, so what? What's your talents? What's your gift? What are you passionate about? They, they don't know, you know. And, and that person might be great with numbers. They might be an accountant. They say, no, I've got no gifts. No, you have gifts. You have a gift for understanding numbers and math. And, you know, God has placed you in your workspace, in that environment, to bring your gift to make that environment at a better place. If that company excels because of your good work, it means it can employ other people. And there's so many things that's added onto that where creation now becomes a better place because God has placed you there. So you need to 
in this discovery process, you need to learn to listen to your dissatisfaction, your holy discontent, if I can call it that. You know, a lot of people are just dissatisfied because they don't like the, the work atmosphere, environment. You know, they don't like um, the, the pay is not enough or they don't like uh, their boss or something like that. And, and that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you know that you know this is not your life's calling. You're doing this because it's, you know, it's paying good or you're doing this because your parents said you must or, or you know, just because this is what you've been doing, that's the opportunity you got and now you've been in this line of work for 10 years and you feel dissatisfied. This is not, you're not excited to get up in the morning to go to work. And God is saying, but maybe there's something else that I've gifted you with. And that is what I'm calling you towards. Perhaps you should listen to what other people say. People might tell you, listen, you've got a gift for singing. Or perhaps they might tell you, listen, I think you rather should stick to singing in the showers. You know, Then you know, I'm not going to pursue a career in the music industry. But if you listen to people, they'll tell you, you, you're good in this area. You're good with people. You know, you, you, you sort of just always understand how mechanics work. Um, you're very creative. You, if, when you listen to people, you'll start realizing what other people point out. Because for you, it might seem easy. But other people understand how difficult it is that seems easy to you. And therefore, you probably have a gift in that area. Then you can also listen to your passions. You know, when we appoint someone, I always ask these questions. What makes you angry? What makes you excited? You know, what makes you happy? These emotions, you know, sort of gives away what you are passionate about. You, when, you, when you are really angry and passionate about this thing, when, you know, this thing doesn't work the way it should, you know that this person has a passion for that particular area. And so your passion will also tell you something of the gifting God has given you and, and the direction that he wants to take you in. And maybe, you know, that's just something that you still need to discover. But then you also need to listen to your gifts. You need to find out and explore and see if you are good at that particular thing. Because if you cannot do math to save your life, but you want to become an accountant, you are passionate about that. If you can't do math, you know, you're going to be frustrated for the rest of your life. And so you might be passionate about something. I'm very passionate about singing. And if I could, I would go around the world and just sing my heart out and become a musician, a musician for life, you know. But, uh, but I can't sing to save my life. And, and so people have helped me with that and said, do I rather stick to your day job? And, and, and although there's a passion on the one area, I know there's no... Um, Gifting that accompanies that passion. So these are the things that you can do to, to discover and explore what the gifts are that God has given you. The second one I want to talk about is develop. You've probably heard this, you know, somebody saying, oh, you're so gifted. Or maybe you've used those words saying to a person that is really gifted in the area that you are so gifted. And the assumption here is almost, you know, that there's no work that went into the gift. You are so lucky. You know, you've got it made. You can sing. Uh, you can do the math. You are good at understanding how systems work. You are so gifted. And I can tell you that if you ask a person that's successful in any area of life, in any area of, um, of their workspace, if you ask them, how did you get there? Or how did you get here where you are right now? They will never tell you, oh, you know, I don't know, actually. And just one day I woke up and I was, yeah, and it's just incredible. I don't, I've got no idea how I got here. They will not say that. They will definitely say, I know exactly how I got here. Because the work that they put in, the effort that it took to, for them to get there, you know, they, had, they might have had the, 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 raw, the raw talent but they had to develop this, this talent, this gift that God has given them. You know, we read about the guy that received five talents and two talents. And then there was one guy that received one talent. And he went and he buried the talent. He didn't uh, exercise it. He didn't develop this talent. He, he hid it away. And sometimes we do that because we are scared or afraid or shy. Or what if we don't make it? But God has called us to develop and put in the work, the hard work. If you go and listen to a, 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 a sports person, you know, a runner, 
or a swimmer, an uh, Olympic winner, you will find out that they got up early, early in the morning. They'll wake up and they go jogging or they'll get into the pool and practice, practice, practice until one day they've really honed in those skills and they've really become masters of what they've been called to do. And so you've got to develop the gifting that God has placed in your life. If you're going to make a difference, if you're really going to, to um, have an impact in the world that God has placed you in to function in, you're going to have to develop your gifts. The third one I want to talk about today is the word intentional. Intentional. John Maxwell talks about this. He says that we are called to live intentional lives. You know, we have to be intentional with our gifting. We have to apply them to the realities of this world. You know, again, you can't hide them away. If we're not intentional, if we're not developing them into something that can really make a difference, where people will, will want to listen to you because they can see, you know, how good you are at this, how much of a difference you are making because of the talents you're bringing to the table. That only happens when you are intentional with your life. Here's what John Maxwell says. He says, most people don't lead their lives. They just accept it. That's so profound. I want you to hear that again. Most people don't lead their lives. They just accept. Kesara, whatever will be, will be. You know, this is what I'm doing. This is what I've been doing for 20 years. Or my dad was, you know, an electrician. And now I guess I also have to become an electrician. And, and we just accept lives, we, our lives. We don't lead it. We, we, he, what John Maxwell says is all of us are called to be leaders. We lead ourselves, first of all. And when we lead our lives, that's when we are intentional. That's when we develop our gifts. That's when we take our lives into a specific direction. You know, John Maxwell, uh, he started out as a pastor, but, but he's currently one of the most successful authors and speakers on, on leadership uh, in the world today. You know, God's given him favor amongst especially leaders in the business sector. Now, as a pastor, you might expect him to say this following thing uh, th that he said, but this is in the context of speaking to business people. He says... One of the most important things in living an intentional life is asking yourself the question on a daily basis, how can I add value to people? How can I add value to people? This is so important. You know, Jesus, wherever he went, he added value to people. And John Maxwell speaks on this, and I've actually placed the link to his his talk on the Global Leadership Summit on this topic in my, my sermon note link, uh, uh, notes. I've placed the link there. And um, I want to encourage you to go onto Facebook. You'll find the link to my sermon notes there. And, and go click at the bottom of my notes. Go click on the link of John Maxwell. And go listen to this talk. It's a brilliant talk. We're speaking to leaders. Explaining how to add value to people. I remember Jesus coming to this place where, you know, the religious leaders brought this woman that was caught in adultery. And, you know, they just, they wanted to stone her. They wanted to punish her. The deed, what she did, her, her wrongdoing, her sin was so much more important for them. They wanted to correct her. But Jesus wanted to connect with her. You know, he forgave her. He said to her, go and sin no more. He Shared, he opened up his heart to her. He, he, he showed love to her. He added value to her life. The religious leaders didn't see any value in her life. Her life was not important. They wanted to kill her because of what she did. But Jesus saw the value in this woman. And this is what he did wherever he went. You'll see that he, he came and he brought, just, he brought value and added value to people. Now when you do this. When you get up every day asking yourself, how can I add value today to people? You know, John talks about different ways of doing that. Again, go listen to, to his talk. But when you ask yourself the question, how do I add value to people? And you start doing that in practical terms. You'll see when you do this intentionally, you'll, you'll also be intentional with impacting your world. You'll see your, the world around you change. Because of you, of who you are, of the gifts that God 
has placed in your life. You know, this is my, my last sermon for you as a, as a congregation, Dr. Dave Volkier. And I, I thought to myself, you know, it, this is so, so for this occasion of bringing my last sermon to you, I'm asking myself the question, you know, what would the last be, thing be that I want to share with you? And, and, and this is so appropriate. This is exactly what I want, want you to hear today is, is the words of Galatians 6 in the message that says, Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work that you have been given. As a child of God, that's my heart's desire for you, that you will discover God's calling for you, that you will discover your, your gifting and your talents because it's going to tell you all about your calling, about why you are here on earth. You're going to discover a life that is meaningful and purposeful and you can live a joyful life once you have discovered that. So there's nothing more, you know, once you've met Christ, if I have introduced Christ to you, then that's priority number one, knowing God. But secondly, the, the thing that I want to share most with you, that I want to talk to you about the most, the, the last thing that I would say to you, if I were to die today, and this is the last thing I could say to you, it is that you would discover who you are and why God has placed you here on earth. And that's the purpose of this message. You see... Jesus said, let me tell you why you are here. Again, this is the, the scripture for the whole sermon series. Matthew 5, 13 to 16 in the message. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here uh, to be light, bringing out the God colors of this world. You know, the beauty that God has created to cultivate it, to make it even more beautiful. God has brought you in as a co-worker in this process. And then he says, be generous with your life. Be generous with your life. That is my prayer for you. You know, as, as you explore the gifts all the gifts, the blue gifts, the Holy Spirit that wants to work through your life and empower you supernaturally to do things far beyond what you could pray, think or dream of. The gifts where the gifts of the red category, the gifts of Jesus that where you share the gospel. You know, when, when you are in a space where your natural gifts and talents function, you make your, world, your workspace a better place. You know, and you really just do your best in that area. Your business is successful. When that happens, you will see that God gives you favor in the eyes of man. And in that process, when God starts giving you favor, people want to hear what you have to say. And that's when they'll start asking you about your life. And you get this opportunity to share about your faith in Jesus Christ. And the red gifts come into play and you start sharing the gospel. And in that moment, perhaps there's a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or this person asks for prayer and you can pray for, for sickness and, and healing takes place and the blue gift starts to operate. And again, I've said this before, that these gifts, although we categorize them, the Bible doesn't. You know, like we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they are one God. We're talking about one God. These gifts are intertwined into one another. God has bestowed these gifts upon you and He wants to work these gifts through your life to touch other lives, for you to be generous with your life. You see, success is all about me. It's making my life better. It's reaching that point of success, the financial you know, security that comes with that. But significance is about other people. And God has called you to success, but He's also called you beyond success to a point of significance where your life are touching other people's lives, changing this world to a place where God reigns, changing this world to a place where God's glory is being put on display. I want to take this moment and, and just pray for you that God will excel your gifts and your talents in your life to the point where He's using you in, in, a, in a supernatural, magnificent way, but also through your natural talents and gifts. And so, Father, I'm praying right now. I'm trusting in the name of Jesus that you will come and reveal the gifts that you've given to every person listening to this sermon. 
Lord, that you will take us on this journey of discovery, that we will discover what we are passionate about, that you will come and remind us about what makes us joyful and excited and maybe even angry because we will discover in that our passion. And with that, that we will listen to what people say about what we are good at and that we will put in the effort, Lord, to start developing these different gifts and that we will allow you to show us perhaps other hidden dormant gifts that we never knew were there that you bring to the light. And as we develop them, Lord, help us also to become intentional. Give us the wisdom to be intentional with our lives, that we will lead our lives, not accept our lives, and that we will lead our lives into a direction that impacts this world. Thank you for every gift, every talent among our people. May we see them work. May we see them bring about your glory. May we see them bring about your purposes for us in a time such as this. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the ways for us as a church, how we have decided to add value to people, to add value to our community, is through uh, our school's process, through being involved and making a difference in the schools in our community and in our city. And so we've had the privilege for the last two years to, to bless Kiro School that's right here in our doorstep, to bless them with Bibles for the grade eights, you know. Uh, and we have funded that out of our TREE fund. TREE stands for transfer, Transforming the Educational Environment. And so we also have three youth workers that goes to three different high schools in the larger context of our city. And God has just been amazing in the way that He's provided for that. And, and then there are two schools that's close by, primary schools that we are also engaging with in the talks. And, and one of our youth workers, Alicia, is going to engage in those schools as well. But here's what I want to say today. I want to encourage you. In fact, I want to challenge you. As many of you have been involved in uh, helping us you know, just funding this tree process, just contributing to the tree fund for the past year. And I want to encourage you to keep on doing that, just to recommit for another year, adding to this fund to empower us to be involved in schools. And if you're not yet, I want to encourage you to please do so, to please contact uh, Arnold. His number and his email address will be on the screen. Say, Arnold, you know, I, I want to, uh, I believe God is speaking to my heart and I want to become involved in this. And maybe you just want to take a moment and just allow the Holy Spirit, you know, to come and be generous through your life. Allow the Holy Spirit just to come and awaken the sense of faith, an uh, amount that you, uh, you are prepared to say, God, I, I'm trusting you for this amount. Maybe it's 100 rand. Maybe it is 500 rand or some of you have been contributing 1,000 rand a month towards this tree fund. And maybe you want to be in that space where you say, Lord, I want to trust you right now. Because kids' lives are changed. Children, learners that has been going through very difficult situations with their parents losing their, their work. You know, teachers that don't know how to cope. Principals um, where the, the stress has become too much. And through this process, through this youth worker process and, and through uh, the tree process, we have really been making a huge difference in the lives of these people and maybe today God is talking to you saying you need to get involved you need to get involved this is a, is a uh, church project this is something we all do we all take responsibility for and I'm calling you today to become involved and maybe you want to trust the Holy Spirit say speak to me Lord what amount can I contribute to keep this work going and if you've got that God is speaking to you. If you are convinced you're hot right now, then I want you to email or send a WhatsApp to Arnold and say, Arnold, I want to uh, dedicate this amount to the tree fund. Please send me all the information of how to do this. And, and he will do that. And I can tell you that we are going to make such a difference in so many lives because of what you are doing and the, 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 the finances that you are sowing into the kingdom in this way as well. 
Well, it's been a privilege just to journey with you these last three years. And, uh, and I want to say and I want to encourage you and say, you know, that God has a great plan for Dr. Dave Wolkhevel. There's a great season with Pastor Vili and the rest of the team lying ahead. And, and I know that this congregation, this campus is going to go from strength to strength as God's going to just place this campus as a city on a hill shining brightly in this area. And I want to call you into the space and say, commit, commit for this time that's lying ahead. And please pray for me and Renee as we also get ourselves ready to move into the next space where God also wants to use us. So God bless you. May you have a brilliant week. And I trust that you will discover something new of what God has placed in your life, that he will come and stir the passion, the gifting, the talents, and that he will bring that to your attention as you start working to develop that and become intentional with your life. May God bless you. Forever your love is relentless
possible.